Welcome back. Let's do some lunar, solar, and planetary imaging, but with a small telescope. I'll take you start to finish through Jupiter and give you some other tips and tricks. I have an Orion Apex 127mm Maxitov telescope. And I'm going to be using the 6x26 finder scope that came with it. A really useful piece of equipment is this zoom eyepiece. You don't absolutely need one, but it's useful when really fine tuning and dialing in your finder scope with your primary scope. Here I'm using a water tower in a distance. Make sure your finder and primary are pointing at the same object. This will help you so much later. I can't emphasize this enough. What I really like about having a zoom eyepiece is I can increase the power without having to change eyepieces. It saves me a lot of time. As I increase the power, I further fine tune my finder scope. A dew shield is mandatory on this Maxitov. I recommend you get one even if you're using a refractor because they also serve to cut down on stray light entering the objective. And overall, it'll boost the contrast on planets and the moon. I'll be using the Orion Shorty Times 2 Barlow. It's an okay quality Barlow, but another tip that will greatly improve your results is to purchase a high quality one. I'm using the ZWO ASI 120MC-S camera. This camera is relatively cheap and an excellent entry level planetary camera. The orientation of which really doesn't matter, it's not crucial. But this camera has a really high frame rate. That's crucial for beating atmosphere. It also has a built in IR blocking filter. It's a color camera, so processing and acquisition are really easy. The results on monochrome with a filter wheel will be a whole lot better but that's time intensive and difficult for a beginner. As you can see, I'm using a tracking mount, but there's no need to guide for planetary. I'm using a go-to because a system like this makes it a whole lot easier to keep your planets in the frame. Let's take a moment to go over some really good key points before I show you the live video capture of Jupiter. First off, your seeing conditions. If your seeing is bad, your images are gonna be bad. Good seeing conditions are a must. Planets require a high magnification to resolve detail. A good starting point is to take your imaging sensor in microns and multiply that number by five to seven. That's the focal ratio you should be working at. If you're using a one-shot color camera, make sure you have an IR cut filter. If you can help it, always photograph your planets at the highest of their elevation. There's a lot less atmosphere to look through. Have you heard the saying that aperture is king? In this genre, bigger is better. It's an unfortunate truth that I'll exclude in this video using my small Maxitov. Larger aperture telescopes will always resolve more detail. Long focal length telescopes and small sensors are ideal for planetary. If you have to use a DSLR, consider using backyard EOS and planetary because if your model camera doesn't have video crop mode, it allows you to record directly from a magnified view of the screen. Alternatively, you could use eyepiece projection. I have a tutorial on that if you're interested. Something a lot of people get wrong is not paying attention to the rotation speeds of the planets. There is a limit on how long you can record video before the rotation of the planet causes what they call limb blurring. This is another reason that high frames per second is important on a planetary camera. If you're using SharpCap, use the histogram tool that's built into the program. It's excellent. Focus is absolutely crucial. You may consider buying a Batnov mask, or if the moon's available, you can use the terminating line to really fine tune your focus is a whole lot easier than focusing directly off of a planet, especially planets like Venus. Here's the settings I use to capture the following video clip of Jupiter. As you can see, 
is drifting out of the frame slowly, as I only did a very rough polar alignment. That doesn't matter. I'll show you why in processing. This is why you can use a Dobsonian or a really cheap German equatorial mount. It doesn't matter if you keep the planet centered or not. It helps, but we're going to go through some processing steps that's going to correct for this. The first step of my process is to stabilize the AVI file in a program called PIPP. It's a free software and it's really good for stabilizing video. Open your AVI file and make sure that you have planetary selected in the menu. You can minimize this screen. Then you'll want to click on do processing. This may take a little bit of time depending on your computer's processing speed. To simplify things, we'll leave everything else as default. PIPP will stabilize your AVI so that it is optimized for stacking. And here's the result. See how there's no drift in the frame? It's keeping Jupiter really well centered. And that's gonna help a lot when it comes to stacking in the next program which is Auto Stacker. It's also free software. Next, I'll open the output file that was created by PIPP in AutoStacker. Make sure Planetary is selected. I was using Surface previously for sunspots. For my data, I use size 24 AP, which the AP stands for align points. I'll let it automatically select them, and then I'll always go to analyze. You'll be presented with a graph. The center horizontal line represents 50% quality. Every slash mark above it is a frame auto stacker has decided is above the 50% quality of the total frames. It's up to you to determine what percentage of total frames to use. For my example, I'll use half of the total. Auto stacker will select the best 50% of my frames to stack into one image. I then choose to save stack as and name it. In the next step, I'll use a program called Registack 6. It's also free software. I'm not interested in it for stacking capabilities. I just want to use the wavelet function, which I personally feel is the best available. From here you can see Jupiter looks washed out and has very little surface detail. That's why we use wavelets. It's a good idea to check your histogram. If you feel like it needs stretching, try it. You can always click reset. I'm going to let mine ride on this data as I use the histogram tool in SharpCap during capture. Earlier I mentioned an IR cut filter. If you don't have one or you're using an achromatic scope, it's very likely you'll need to go to balance the RGB. SharpCap's auto balance function works really good.
I'm going to load a wavelet preset that I designed. That saves me a little bit of time. Try moving your sliders to the position mine are in. Play with it to taste. I like to have a good starting point. The wavelets will bring out the detail in your object. Try adjusting the brightness and contrast sliders as well. You can also rotate your object to a desired position when you're done. Do not forget to click do all and then save your image. You can save as a JPEG or you can use a TIFF file or such if you plan to go to Photoshop for additional tweaks and edits. This is my final image. It's not bad for a 127 millimeter Maxitov. I can think of a lot of ways to improve it though. A higher quality Barlow. I could have used a mono camera with a filter wheel. I could have took multiple one minute AVI stacks, then did a derotation in a program called WinG Pose. That would greatly enhance this image. I could have had better seeing conditions. Perhaps I could have turned the gain down a touch. Regardless, I'm really happy with this image, even though it's a really quick and easy process and limited in exposure time. Let's take a look at Saturn from the same night. For whatever reason, I only got 30 seconds of data on Saturn. You can expose for longer than that, but for whatever reason, I was when I went back to check it, I was only at 30 seconds. It's not too bad. The lunar surface is a great place to really get familiar with your seeing conditions. It's a big bright target as you know, and the surface really reveals how thin the atmosphere is. You get used to knowing what you should see. Here's a little above average seeing for my area. This was taken on the same night. Here's the Maxitov with an Orion glass solar filter, an SV Bonnie solar finder and the SV Bonnie 105. I chose the 105 for the sun as I don't need especially fast frames. The SV Bonnie has a little bit more resolution. Here you can see I'm using the histogram tool I mentioned in SharpCap. It takes out all the guesswork for, for exposures. I highly recommend you use it. I'm running out of time, every day goes by so fast. And every moment counts, baby, I don't wanna miss a thing. We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars, or hang out in hotel bars, driving somewhere in your car. We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars.